morning. Ian Crouch with your 8.30 Hunter News update. A woman in her 30s remains in a critical condition in the John Hunter Hospital after being found unresponsive in a Central Coast townhouse. Police made the discovery in Wormsley Road at Arimba yesterday. A 48-year-old man is assisting police with their inquiries. Hunter home buyers will be sweating on the Reserve Bank as it weighs up increasing interest rates for the 13th time since May last year. The RBA will have to consider a range of conflicting economic issues. While inflation is moderating, other data reveals a rebound in the property sector and an increase in lending. Mortgage broker Mark Burris from Yellow Brick Road says some households are hurting. Unfortunately, I don't believe mortgage holders are the ones that are spending all the money. Because the mortgage holders are the ones who, and, and borrowers, business borrowers as well, they're the ones who are copping all the, all the heat. So I don't really think it's a very fair outcome right now where we sit. More than a dozen Newcastle venues will no longer be restricted by tough licensing laws. Emma McFadden has the story. The so-called Newcastle solution introduced in 2008 included limited trading hours and a bid to reduce alcohol fueled violence and antisocial behaviour. The restrictions were lifted during a government trial in 2021. The rules have been permanently scrapped for 15 venues in Newcastle and Hamilton with the goal of boosting Newcastle's nighttime economy. Newcastle community advocate Dr Tony Brown has slammed the changes as a recipe for disaster, fearing a return to the bad old days. A new survey out today shows the majority of regional voters, including in the Hunter, are likely to vote no when the voice referendum is held later this year. The survey by Australian Community Newspapers, which includes the Newcastle Herald, questioned more than 10,000 voters in Canberra, Newcastle and regional towns in New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. It found 57% of regional voters said they were likely to vote no, with only 35% said they would vote yes. The majority of respondents feel the government has not done enough to explain the voice to the community. Some of the Hunter's most successful Indigenous athletes are being honoured at NADOC celebrations across Newcastle this week. This year's theme, For Our Elders, is being acknowledged at events at Newcastle Museum, James Street Plaza and the city's libraries. And Newcastle councillor Deanna Richardson says some of the most well-known First Nations rugby league players are among those being celebrated. I would also really encourage people to go along and check out the, the Koori Knockout exhibition, which is on in the Lover Gallery at Newcastle Library. And that's looking at the history um, in photographs of the Koori Knockout, which began in the 70s, I believe, and is now the biggest rugby league carnival in the world. Work on dredging the Swansea Channel could start in a matter of weeks after the state government obtained environmental approval. However, there's still one more hurdle to jump over. Crown Lands needs to issue a licence for the work to begin. The plan is to remove 30,000 cubic metres of sand in two dredging rounds this year and next autumn. It's hoped to work on the first round can start this month once a tender is approved. MURFM Sport. Blake Macquarie six-time world champion cliff diver Rhiannon Ifland has claimed another victory to extend her dominance. The 31-year-old defeated Canadian rival Molly Carlson at the Italian Red Bull circuit to secure her 23rd win in the past 24 events. Ifland says she's ready to come home after a whirlwind of victories. Most definitely, I'm going to take a few days and just go surfing or hang out with the family. Uh, just completely disconnect because I find that really important. The Knights are racing to re-sign Bradman Best after his selection in the New South Wales squad for Origin 3. The 21-year-old was a shock inclusion in Brad Pittler's side, which saw seven players dropped. Best will become a free agent on November 1, with one year left on his contract, with multiple clubs set to throw their name in the ring for the centre. And Lachlan Scorse, the grandson of late legendary Newcastle jockey Alan Scorse, took his first race win yesterday at Musselbrook aboard Rockbarton Roman. And the winning numbers in Monday Lotto are 7, 18, 23, 29, 36 and 41. And the supplementaries are 21 and 24. And now you're up to date with the latest 2 New RFM Hunter News. Afternoon, I'm Olivia Dillon with your 2 o'clock Hunter News update. Around 20 Newcastle pubs and nightclubs will be allowed to trade for longer and keep serving shots and cocktails past 10pm. It follows successful 12-month trial of relaxed liquor laws, which will now be made permanent to support the city's nighttime economy. Newcastle MP Tim Crackenthorpe has come out in support of the move and says the one-size-fits-all approach being taken to the restrictions was outdated. However, Newcastle community advocate Dr Tony Brown says the community's safety should be prioritised above 
of pub profits. In our view, our respected view, the regulation of alcohol in New South Wales has been captured by this very powerful industry lobby group. And we are going to pace in sadly in our young people's and our emergency workers' safety and welfare being on the streets of Newcastle late at night on a Friday or Saturday night. Nora Head residents are speaking out against the federal government's lack of communication on the proposed Hunter Offshore Wind Farm project. The almost 3,000 square kilometre zone proposed for the project extends from Port Stephens in the north to Nora Head in the south. Members of the Love Nora Head community group say they weren't told about the project with enough time to submit feedback on the proposal and are seeking more information from the government on its plans. Shadow Minister for Climate Change and Energy Ted O'Brien is at Soldiers Beach today to discuss the issue with locals. A former Fire and Rescue New South Wales Commissioner says Newcastle could come under fire this summer as experts warn catastrophic bushfires could be on the way. It comes as the region begins to dry up after years of La Nina conditions. Greg Mullins says areas like Newcastle, not completely burnt by the black summer bushfires, could have leftover fuel putting them at higher risk. Work to dredge the Swansea Channel will begin this month. Up to 30,000 cubic metres of sand will be removed from the beach and placed on Elizabeth Island once approval is granted by Crown Lands. It means boaters will be able to more easily navigate the passage to Lake Macquarie. Swansea MP Yasmin Catley says she's pleased to see the two-year issue finally resolved. Great news for everybody around Lake Macquarie and particularly those living in the Swansea electorate. We are a step closer to having the channel dredged in Lake Macquarie. This, of course, was an election commitment, and I'm very pleased to say that the Labor government is delivering on that commitment, and we're getting dredging underway this month. The new and improved Robins Oval at Maitland Park has officially opened today. The $1.9 million upgrade includes reconstructed tiered seating at McHinman Pavilion, upgraded change rooms, a new canteen, amenities building and storage area. The facelift was jointly funded by the state government, Cricket New South Wales and Council. And the National Rotary Fundraiser set up to support those directly impacted by the Hunter Valley bus crash has raised more than $1.3 million. The first round of funds has already been distributed to help victims' families pay for funeral costs and to cover hospital fees for survivors. The funds manager says more money is set to be rolled out soon. To finance, the All Lords is down nine points at 74.34. One Australian dollar is buying 66.75 US cents. To NURFM Sport. Night star Kaelin Ponga is eager to be the side's long-term goal kicker after a stunning showing on Sunday. The 25-year-old kicked 11 from 11 in the 66-nil demolishing of the Bulldogs. Ponga has been sporadic with the goal-kicking duties in the past, but says he's ready to take the reins. Lake Macquarie cliff diver Riadon Ifland has secured her 23rd win in the past 24 World Series. The six-time world champion defeated Canadian rival Molly Carlson at the Red Bull circuit in Italy to extend her lead at the top of the standings. It's her third consecutive win this year. And Meriwether surfer Philippa Anderson has moved into the round of 32 at the Bolito Pro after being called up for the event as a replacement. And now you're up to date with the latest 2 in URFM Hunter News. I'm Elle Fidget with 2HD News. The Reserve Bank has left the cash rate on hold this afternoon, hitting the pause button for just the second time since hikes began. While economists were divided in their predictions, the RBA board ultimately opted to leave it steady, 4.1% in July, allowing homeowners to breathe a sigh of relief. But today's decision offers only a brief respite. Governor Philip Lowe indicating further rate rises are a live option over the coming months. It comes as interest rates remain at their highest level in over a decade and households continue to play catch up on the last two increases. The average hunter borrower is still forking out an extra $1,700 a month on their mortgage compared to when hikes began. A man will face court this afternoon charged over his alleged role in holding a pair against their will at Port Stephens. In January, a 26-year-old man and a 24-year-old woman were walking toward a car park in Fairfield when two men wearing balaclavas grabbed them and forced them into a vehicle. 
Two days later, the pair escaped a location at Swan Bay where police alleged they were held against their will before calling a family member who contacted the authorities. Port Stevens Hunter police took them to the John Hunter. The man's finger was severed during the ordeal. In April, detectives arrested two men in relation to the kidnapping and they remain before the courts. At about 10 a.m. yesterday, detectives arrested another 25-year-old man at a correctional centre in Silverwater and charged him with four offences. Swansea MP Yasmin Catley may finally have her wish for the Swansea Channel after years of campaigning for regular dredging to be undertaken. Transport for New South Wales has received environmental approval to carry out the maintenance dredge this month, subject to weather conditions and the Maritime Delivery Office receiving the necessary approval from Crown Lands. It'll allow for the removal of up to 30,000 cubic metres of sand by two dredging campaigns to create a 30 metre wide channel. Vessels have been unable to access the channel intermittently for years. Yasmin Catley has been pushing for regular dredging since well before the last state election. And the 12-month rail maintenance blitz is hitting Hunter commuters again this week with warnings of delays over the coming days. If you're travelling towards Sydney between 9.40pm and 3.50am tonight until Thursday, buses will replace trains between Wyong and Gosford. Also affected is access to Central Station from tomorrow through Monday, where Hunter Central Coast trains will only go as far as Strathfield, meaning travellers will need to hop off and change services to go further. 2HD Sport. The Newcastle Jets will be able to play out their full season at McDonald Jones Stadium. Concerns had been raised by the club that the A-League side wouldn't have full access to the stadium, which is booked to host several other events, including the return of the Supercross Championship. The playing service was left in a dire state following last year's Triple Crown, drawing heavy criticism from football fans. But the venue has confirmed this time around it will bring in ready-to-play turf to get matches back at the ground immediately after the Supercross event, which will be in Newcastle on November 11. And Morgan Sivalik and Jackson Baker have advanced to the round of 32 at the Ballado Pro in South Africa as they look to return to the top-tier championship tour. The Merriweather duo took on the 2-3 to three foot swells of the Challenger Series event overnight where Sivalik dominated his heat with a 13.17, while Baker narrowly scraped in, coming second with an 11.13 just ahead of New Zealander Billy Stammon, who was sent packing. Local Philippa Anderson also topped her heat in the women's competition with a 12.97, which secured her a spot in the round of 32. <laughs> I'm Madeline Lewis with ABC Hunter News. Opinion among economists is split on whether the Reserve Bank will today increase interest rates for a 13th time in over a year. Sam Wilkinson reports. Three of the big four banks are expecting to see the official cash rate go up from its current level of 4.1% today. The ANZ's chief economist, Richard Yetzinger, says despite signs of an improving labour market, inflation is still too high. There's not enough evidence that they've done enough. The Commonwealth Bank's chief economist, Stephen Helmerich, however, says the Reserve Bank may prefer to wait for next month's quarterly consumer price index figures. Also in early August, they do a full redo of all their forecasts. So we think a final rate hike in August. The RBA this decision will be made public at 2.30pm Eastern Standard Time. A Supreme Court jury has been told a hunter man accused of murdering a woman in 2019 hinted to a neighbour he'd done something bad. Giselle Wakatama reports. Justin Kentalosa is standing trial accused of murdering Danielle Isi at a home at Narara on the central coast in 2019. Jeremy Princehorn lived in the Newcastle suburb of Cardiff, across the road from Mr Delosa at the time. In giving evidence yesterday, he described being taken to the Narara home and shown Miss Easy's body. He said her arm was stiff and he left the room and smoked ice, fearing for his own safety and watching what he said. He said days earlier he'd had a bonfire at his house and a knife belonging to Mr Delosa was thrown into the fire pit. Mr Princehorn said Mr Delosa was hinting he did something bad, but didn't say what. The trial continues. 
The company behind an application for offshore gas exploration off the Hunter and Central Coast says more supply is clearly needed as power prices soar. It comes as a state government bill trying to prevent the exploration has been referred to a standing committee due to concerns it could create legal risks between state and federal legislation. Managing Director of Advent Energy, David Breeze, says more gas exploration is needed. Gas is recognised now as a critical importance to the energy transition. This is a really important, critical point for the economy and for consumers, not just in New South Wales, but the entire east coast of Australia and, in fact, Australia, if we look at it. The Regional Australia Institute hopes a campaign promoting those who've moved from the city to the country will engage others to do the same. The think tank has launched its website, Move to More, which showcases regional areas across the country and their corresponding job vacancies. But external affairs director says Loretta Wallace says she thinks the individual stories will be key to people seriously considering a move. We're hoping that this campaign is going to be winning the hearts and minds of of city dwellers we know are increasingly dissatisfied with their life in the city and they'll maybe, what we say, move to more. Newcastle and Central Coast train commuters have been told to allow extra travel time to and from Sydney from tomorrow. Work at Central Station is closing platforms 1 to 12 for six days, meaning passengers will need to change trains at Strathfield. Regional services from the north will need to change at Broadmeadow as well. New South Wales Trainlink Chief Executive Dale Merrick says it means planning ahead. Passengers and your listeners will need to change services at Strathfield and what that will mean is crossing the platform and joining one of the regular Sydney train suburban services that go into the unaffected platforms in at Central. So changing trains at Strathfield to continue their journeys. The Australian Native Bee Association will today vote on whether to form a Hunter Central Coast branch. Many local beekeepers are looking at ways to keep their passion alive after losing their European honeybees due to varroa mite eradication efforts. The association will meet at Boorogal tonight to vote on whether to form a local branch. Turning to sport, in the NRL, Newcastle Knights centre Bradman Best will make his State of Origin debut for the Blues as coach Brad Fittler shakes up his squad for Game 3. Best joins teammate Jacob Saifidi in the squad, which includes seven changes, while fellow Knight Tyson Frizzell was dropped. In women's soccer, two Hunter stars have been named in the Matildas squad for this month's FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. Emily Ben Egmond and Claire Wheeler both got the call up. And Lake Macquarie's Rhiannon Ifland has won the latest Cliff Diving World Series event in Italy, marking her third win of the 2023 series. Ifland has now claimed 10 event wins in a row. Cloudy in the Hunter today, very high chance of rain. ABC News.